Hello everyone, this is What If Deluke was, or What If Deku was Deluke Part 2. Now, well, I'm going to add something in that, well, a character from Genshin Impact can do too well. I'm going to give that too well. Izuku. Now, I've read some of the comments that you've all been stating. Um, Instead of um his vigilante name slash hero name that I'm going to be put as... His hero name is going to be the Black Knight. Now, if you don't know what the Black Knight means in Genshin Impact, Deluc was more or less a vigilante. Basically, he helped people in Genshin Impact at certain times. Basically being Batman, you could say. How Batman, the whole thing of Batman, you know, the Dark Knight and stuff like that. And being a protector. So, yeah. But, anyways... Um, the thing I'm going to give him is, well, if you don't know, in one of the missions that you get, I I haven't done it yet, but I know of it. I It's either a side mission or part of the main storyline. Child, well, wants to fight you. And Child uses a certain ability that makes him expend, well, extremely powerful. There's two stages. Um, in this, it's not going to be what it's called. In the other one, it's going to be called Fire Release. Now, don't get them mistaken with something from Naruto or something else. The reason why is, well, the Luke can only, or Izuku can only use fire, red fire. But the inducing so, it also changes his body and what it looks like. Which would lead Izuku to, well, in this, get blue eyes and blue hair. Instead of red eyes and, well, red hair. Or, and red eyes, red hair. So he has blue instead of red. And that would also go to his sword as well as his little necklace. Anything that's red also in his whole outfit that he's wearing. But one of the side things about the power that is very, um, it could end up killing Izuku or, well, not killing because I can't have Izuku die, but it could lead up to him dying or extremely hurt is, it's basically like, okay, one for all is taxing on Izuku's body if he goes to a certain amount, right? Or, you can't say anything, but... It's like, if he, Izuku use a percentage over, it strains his body. Now, if he keeps doing that, it's going to hurt his body more and more. It's the equivalent... It's the equivalent... It's basically that. The equivalent of him getting hurt more and more, the more power he uses. So, it's not like... Because I know how, like, this Deku uses the one, one for all 100% right off the bat. Immediately breaks his arms. But it's not like that for Zuku with this power. It's more like it puts a strain on his body, and the more and more power he gets from that, it puts a bigger strain on his body, injuring him more. It doesn't per se break bones, but it could potentially fracture bones or just, well, leave a lot of bruises and weaken him quite a bit. So, yeah. Now, well... I do believe we left off with Izuku, well, going to UA, or the first day. Now, promptly, Izuku will not go to the first day. Why? Well, Nezu, knowing, well, at least could figure out Izuku's name was Izuku Midoriya. He's not stupid, nor is Aiza. Um, He would pronounce, no, Izuku owns a winery, or at least a wine company, and it needs to be, well, operated. And, well... He wasn't able to go in the first day, him calling out, you know, doing a whole call and saying, oh, I can't be here today. You know, regular school stuff. Don't need to explain it. Nezu understand because he owns a company, so he needs to at least be there for a little bit. And come the next day. Now, next day would promptly be, for plot, heroes versus villains. Now, no one would have known... It was Zuku. Now, I know I skipped over the entry exam, but he took the recommendation, and yeah. I'll just say Bakugo helped Uraraka. So, yeah. Uh, Momo, obviously, also getting recommendation because, you know, Momo. You know, her rich, she rich. So, yeah. Anyways, when Izuku leaves, he puts on the whole weight uniform, being very, well, fun she in it. And, yeah, now, he wouldn't bring his sword, so, 
or he would bring a briefcase and have his sword in it. Or it's more like, it's in a big duffel bag where it's costumous, and it's in there. And he comes in roaring with that lovely Corvette, or not Corvette, Ferrari sound. No offense to any um, non-Ferrari fans just using the car. And, well, it draws attention like, well, anyone would. Because, as well, either everyone's broke in that school, or they get picked up from fancy limos or other such things. You know, Momo's kind of parents just say, oh, we'll bring the limo around. But not many people see a Ferrari driving and <laughs> coming in now. They must have all thought that maybe um, he didn't come yesterday, or maybe he took a different car from the day before. They don't know, but they're curious. And when Izuku gets out, Momo proceeds to blush and look away, which some of the other girls just, well, look at her saying, Ooh, you like him? Her saying, N Yeah. Mina, being Mina, would have gone up to her, doing the whole trying to hug Momo saying, so, you should go ask, you should go tell him then. I, I, I you know, no. I'm gonna go say hi to my boyfriend. Which Mina just like, uh, uh, wait, will pardon me? Momo going to Zuku, kissing him on the cheek. Saying, hi babe, it's Zuku. Well, <coughs> bows on, or gets on one knee, kissing Momo's hand. And gets up saying, hello. Hi, Momo. Her blushing very much because, well, all the girls in behind them are looking. Not all the girls, but like a fair decent. I'll just say, mm, Uraka, Jiro, and Mina. So, yeah. And there were just like, uh, who the hell is he? Because Mina makes a remark stating that he looks very hot for a guy. With, well, Jiro just saying, isn't he, um, didn't you hear those rumors that a um, vigilante might be coming in? Or a, um, well, a vigilante might be coming in? There was a, word did get out that Izuku was coming in, so, yeah. And, well, it would have brought back. Now, no one knows what truly um, Izuku looks like. They only know that the person has red eyes, red hair. And, well, is white. No offense. Just stating his, well, race. or Not race, I'm stupid. Um, his skin color. Because the, it's basically a description. Not being, you know the old racist comment of anything like that. Please do not take it that way. I'm just explaining the whole stuff of Izuku. Anyways, um, he would promptly, um, walk over Mina, or not Mina, Mina just looking at Izuku saying, are you two dating? Izuku, proudly smiling, just saying, yes. They go and walk into 1A. Aizawa sleeping saying, where were you yesterday? Everyone's about there, and Izuku's saying, I had business, what do you think? My company doesn't all run itself, you know. I have to be there. Which, some people are like, wait, company? Izuku just waving on, saying, oh, yeah. I am the said company, and I own it. They're like, sweet, you're the what now? You're the eighth best winery in the entire of Japan? How do they know this? Ida would yell it out, seeing, you know, fancy boy, Ida. And, yeah. Now, Izuku would have looked at Ida, stating that, so you're, let me guess, going and pointing everyone, looking to Bakugo, saying, asshole, pointing to Ida, Strickler, pointing to Momo, beautiful. Um, pointing to Mina, gossiper. Pointing to, um, Jiro saying, um, heavy metal, I'm guessing, from your whole look. Um, then pointing at Mineta, pervert. Pointing at Kamenar saying, dumbass. Then pointing at, he 
short in the form of what I'm trying to say is, he basically makes a stereotype for every single person there. Which I was like, uh, how can you just tell? Izuku shrugging, saying, I have to be a good judge of character for my business. And other things. People, well, the question did come up, though. Which, I'll say, um, Higakure, Invisible Girl, ask if he was that vigilante that's coming in. Izuku just saying that he'll neither, well, um, say yes or no. Think of what you want, or think of whatever you want to think about, about it. Which, they can all tell, like, Izuku is the person, it's just like, they need actual vo vocal proof, like, oh, I'm this. So, yeah. I was just looking at it. Well, Izuku saying, are you done berating my students? Izuku saying, are you done um, s sleeping in? Him, well, let's have a look at Izuku and just like, motherfuck. You know what? Screw you. Izuku saying, ah, screw you too. Putting up the middle finger to Aizawa. Not racist at all. And I saw but I put up the middle finger to them. To him. Now the entire class of one is just shitting their pants because they've seen I saw well scary because of the day before. Also, Minette is still there. So yeah. And well they both break out into a big laughter saying, You're funny, kid. And as I was or Zuku would just say that you're funny, eraser head. Which everyone is like they're in the dead pants, just like, uh, oh god, what what did we just sign up for? Momo's just like, Izuku Midoriya, what are you doing? Izuku sensing the, well, annoyance of Momo, or the, you know, terrified um, Izuku now. Looking back at Momo saying, hi, yes, sorry Momo. But before she can, well, finish her words that she was about to say, a, well, blonde with the red eyes would have yelled, Deku, how are you here and why do you look different? Tell me, you shitty nerd. You quirkless ass nerd. Tell me. Shaking Izuku quite a bit, might I add. Izuku getting pissed off because obviously Bakugoni has not forgave him yet. Or has not forgave him at all about the old past saying, Bakugo, you might not want to test yourself on me. Bakugo saying, oh, what are you going to do about a nerd? Use or what? What do you have? Just because you change your eye color and you're got a, or, and got a, um, what are they called? Like the stuff on your head. Um, a wig doesn't mean you can act all mighty and tough. Izuku saying one, these are my actual eyes, color now, and two, that's actually my real hair. Now I suggest you let me go, leaving out a lot of bloodlust. Now. Nothing was towards Momo because gentleman Deku, but everyone is feeling that, and Mineta pisses his pants. Yeah, I'm, that's not expression, he literally just pisses his pants. Bakugo being right in the well, front of it would have taken the full brunt of that but lust, and well, he almost got traumatized from that. Him panting and just, uh, what, uh, what, what happened to you? Deku. Deku saying, I grew up. Now, leave me alone. Getting in a very terrifying voice. Now, Momo just said, that's enough, Izuku. Izuku looking over to Momo saying, yes, love. Walking over to Momo. Saying, sorry if I went overboard. Her saying, that's an understatement. Now, who was he? Oh, him old bully. Something I wanna, well, let's just hope I can beat his ass someday. Momo rolling her eyes saying, don't. Izuku saying, hey, I'm not gonna pass the opportunity up, Momo. Sorry, but 
I'm not gonna pass it up. Momo Sang just saying, whatever, just don't kill him. Deku saying, why would I kill him? I'm just gonna be the ever living shit out of him. Momo just sighing again, just saying, you are gonna be troublesome in my life, aren't you? Deku saying, well, I'm a good troublesome. Kissing her on the cheek and sitting in a chair right beside Momo. Aizawa coming for his back from not being, well, getting out of his whole thing of being, well, scared by Izuku. Or he wasn't scared, but he's like, how in the hell? He was more like shocked that Izuku had all that bloodlust. It wasn't like he had the bloodlust, like he didn't feel the bloodlust. Because Izuku didn't point it towards him, so yeah. Because he was facing away. So, yeah. But. Anyways, um, they would pronounce go through school. I saw teaching them about what they can do as heroes and different things of, you know, regular boring blah 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 stuff. End of class. Now, you would have heroes. I was saying today you're doing your hero, um, you're doing hero training, and it's going to be with another teacher. I'm going to go and grade both paperwork, basically schoolwork from other students, so, yeah. And, well, they would be remarking and saying it might be, um, All Might, didn't All Might come to school? And when, well, Izuku hears the name All Might, he scowls. Which, he says, what, what are you, what happened with you and All Might? Izuku, or Midoriya. Izuku saying, oh, well. Would you like to know the long story or the short story? Um, I... Short? He shattered my dream in two. Everyone's like, that does not sound like All Might. Izuku saying, oh, well, not everyone's who we believe they are. I guess, so. Whatever. And, well, All Might says, I am here, coming through the door like a human being. Deku in his mind just saying, how in the hell is that going through the door like a human being? Or like a regular person, not a human being. But he would not express his um, stuff outwards, so All Might would just explain that today you're doing a heroes versus villains test. Or heroes versus villains Assignment or test. And I would just do the old marking saying, wait, are we going to get or, You know, what I was out threatening them before the day before. All my would have just said, no, we are. No. Ooh. Did I saw tell you this? And I'm just saying, no, or he did. T he told us this yesterday. And yeah. And him, well, so you guys not flinched a single bit when All Might came in. Not even, you know. Doing, oh, wow, it's All Might. And he would have looked at Izuku, but refrained from his gaze, because, well, he can... Nezu abruptly told or told All Might who is, well, Deluke, or the vigilante named the Black Knight, did, also known as Deluke. He has two names, just for plot. And, well, hearing that Izuku Midoriya, he would have also asked that before, well... Class ends, Izuku Midoriya could please talk, or before they go and change, could Izuku Midoriya talk to him for after they, he lets them all go and change. And then goes on the whole speech of telling them, now you need to all look the part. With a lot of briefcases coming out, but one duffel bag. People would have been swell. Curious and ask, what's the duffel bag for? Izuku saying, it's my stuff, opening it and... Well, you see this. They're like, oh shit. Izuku looking over saying, I dulled it. They're like, oh thank god, we're not gonna get cut in two. And when all my seasons, he's like, at least he dulled it. Being like, he, cause he was gonna ask, but when he heard like, oh, Izuku dulled it. So, yeah. Cause he didn't want his well, students to, you know, get chopped in two. Or... Fingers come off, or something like that. Which is a good thing, because, well... I saw a totally brief thing about what happened with him and Bakugo. So, yeah. 
He's at least grateful that Bakugo won't be getting a severed arm or, you know, something severed. Or just, well, hurt. It's the quote of, like, you know how in um, Black Black Clover, how Asa had that dulled sword? It's the equivalent of that. Stronger, yes, but very, um, very heavy. And now maybe you can lift it. With Izuku training as hard as he did, yeah. Kirishima would li can lift it, it's just like, mm, how would I explain it? It just takes a little, like, it would take a lot of effort for him to lift it. And he couldn't really do much with it. So, yeah. And Izuku promptly looking in, which some people do peek. They see the, you know, the refined suit of Deluke. And they were like, Whew, that looks nice. Damn, he'll be looking fresh on duty. No homo. So, yeah, now, well, Momo getting her briefcase, going off to the ladies' room. Now, changing room. They would all see Deku several scars on his body from vigilante work. And several burns from him trying to increase his fire. And one time it backfired, slightly toasting him. It was a small burn, yes, but it was very noticeable. And, well, something other, like other scars on his body, not cuts or anything like that. It looks like, well, fire happened or something like that. A.K.A. Bakugo's quirk from bullying him. So much. And, well, Izuku, they would ask of what, who, um, how did all these scars happen? Izuku saying, pointing at, well, Pointing at several of them, then pointing at Bakugo. Then looking at Baku, Baku just saying, What? He's quirkless. Now Baku have no idea what's about to happen to him, so yeah. Which, um, who would I say? Kirishima just that's so not manly, dude. You bullied him for not having a quirk. Yeah, wait. You do you have a quirk, Izuku or Midoriya? Izuku saying, Oh, yes. Proceeding to make a lovely fire flower in his hands. Showing great control of his fire. Now, Todoroki just said, so, your fire is, how strong is your fire? Izuku saying, I can probably get up to blue fa well, barely get up to blue flames. And if I do so, it would just burn me alive if I don't use a certain technique I've learned. It strains my body to a very, very se um, severe state, but it works. They would ask of, can, they, can you show him? Izuku saying, if I did that, I would be a rag doll afterwards. Anyone could fight me and they would win. So, I'd rather not. It's plus. It's my trump card. Which does get them all, not scared, but concerned for their own well-being, because, well, they have no idea what that technique is, nor do they know what it's capable of. They all know what blue fire is, but they don't know if, well, he can do it to the extent before. Now, Todoroki hears a blue fire, reminds him of, well, Toya, and then reminding him of his father, and just thinking, and that's why I don't use my blue flames. But he would think that to himself. Now, but Izuku promptly knowing the surroundings of himself, sensing the, well, daddy issues, or at least one way of saying it, coming from Todoroki. Him just thinking his mind saying, I'll talk to him later. Plus, I need a fix, I need to, well, finish what I was doing yesterday. Smiling and, well, you could say it's a present for endeavor. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to tell you all what the never thing is going to be. But anyways. They would pronounce go and see All Might. Now, nothing would change. Momo would still, you know, be paired off with everyone that she got paired up with. Z Izuku, same thing. Araka, Bakugo, Ida. Now, well, when Araka asked for a plan and asked if Izuku can... Tell what his quirk is, because she doesn't know. They explain what each other's quirks are. And Izuku probably states that the probably the um, bomb would be at the top of the building, knowing Bakugo. 
her asking why, what do you think that? Izuku saying, one Bakugo would not care where it gets placed. All he would care about is fighting. Also, I suggest I would take care of Bakugo. Now, I'm not saying you're a weak Uraka, just he's more battle, equip battle equipped than other than other in our class. Uraka, knowing she, well, would have no, well, she would get her ass beat if she fought against Bakugo. She knew this too. She, she knew her own strength and weakness. And even if that tight area, it would have been severely hard to fight against Bakugo. She says, alright, I'll go see where which area the bomb is in, or at least I'll go look for the room that bomb's in. Izuku's just saying, alright, and if you see Tenya, try to fight him, but if you can, just stay hidden. Contact me once you're found the bomb. Passing her a communication. Her pointing at the one already in her ear saying, wait, don't we Izuku's saying put it on. It's better it's better, um communication. And we have no Pointing at the, well, the glass thing that's, or at least looking at a camera saying, no, um, people watching us. But it's fully, if you don't, or just grabbing it and taking the other one out, putting it in. Now, before All Might can say something, they have already taken their stuff out, and he's like, what are you planning, Azuku? Now, well, there's speakers, yes, in that building, but they might not survive Izuku's, you know, you know. So, yeah. Now, well, when Izuku gets in, he still gets, get over here, you damn nerd, and die. Izuku's saying, like hell. Proceeding to bitch slap, literally bitch slap, like back the back end towards Bakugo, slapping him and, well, in, not engraving him to a wall, but he leaves a dent in that wall. Shocking everyone, and it's like, oh shit, he just bitch slapped to me, he made a dent in the wall. So they're like, we don't, we should not fuck with Izuku. Because they have cameras, so they can still see it, it's just they can, like, hear what Izuku, well, everyone's staying in the, Earbuds, so yeah. Bakugo pronounced get up, still being, you know, that didn't like hurt him too much. Maybe a bruise, but he could still fight. Saying, damn you, damn nerd, just, well, hunch over and let me speak to you. Is it cool? Well, saying, I've been waiting for this. By his posture, you know, with Bakugo. Bako's about to get his ass totally beat. Momo's already saying, Damn it, Izuku, why do you have to be like this? With everyone looking over to Momo saying, What what do you, what is he going to do? What I think he's going to beat Bako's ass to a bloody pulp. All my now just saying, That's not allowed. He needs to just capture him or not beat him to a bloody pulp. Which... Momo would have objected, saying, what if, um, Izuku has no choice? By the tone of how Bakugo has been acting, as well as what happened yesterday, it seems that they have, well, a messed up past. I'm saying that's no reason for a hero in training to be... Momo saying, I might do me a favor. Yes, Momo? Stop with this bullshit. Everyone's looking at Momo and saying, Did you just swear to All Might? And like, All Might's saying, what, what do you mean? All Might, we can, I can tell that you are not ready to teach people. You're probably doing this for another reason that I have no clue of. Though I won't ask what that reason is, just, if you're going to teach, have someone here to help you. You're a terrible teacher, no offense. I'm saying, yes, but I'm the... Momo saying, yes, you are the number one hero. But that doesn't make you a good teacher. Those are two different categories in total. Teaching and heroism. Two different things. 
Now, everyone can actually, you know, they understand. It's like, it's a very well factor. Even Minette and Den Denki, and I understand that. So, yeah. And, well, they just see Baco proceed to get his ass beat. To a literally a bloody pulp. His face is battered and beaten. It literally looks like he's going to cave in. While his arms are basically dislocated and bruised like hell. And his... Well, he's not standing straight for some reason. Maybe Zuku hit him the groin. But, eh. Whatever. And, yeah. Now, he passed out through pain and exhaustion. And several amounts of dudes have factors, but basically pain and exhaustion, with Izuku probably only having a single scorch mark on his, well, suit, looking down at it and just cursing Baku's name, I was saying, do you know how long this took me to clean before against another fire user? Five fucking days. <sighs> Sighing and going off. Now, they're uh, thinking of what it is you could just say, but, well, I'll just say, um, hmm. Denki just states that maybe he was, um, maybe he was talking about his cool outfit. Baku might have scorched with his explosions. Which they look at, uh, well, they look at Denki saying, that's not the reason. There's probably a different reason. You probably have something on there or something that help him. But, Dinky was right on the point. But no one knowing it, Dinky's stupid would have just said no. But they would ask and later do. But, well, backstory. Baraka would still be by Ida, giggling and revealing her position. Now, same with Ida, he moved all of the whole stuff in that room to the sides where Baraka can't get unless she wants to be seen and not be, you know, stealthy. And. Well, probably putting her at a disadvantage. Now you would just hear, knock, knock, knock. Which, Deku trying to impersonate Baku saying, A four eyes. And you can tell it's Deku, just, it's a terrible accent. I took out Deku. Him saying, You, are you, um, hero? How dare you imposture my comrade? But before he can do that, he the door literally goes into his face. Like he gets, sm the door gets smacked off the hinges and just whacked. And you would have heard, you would have just seen Deku with his sword like a bat. He literally battered the door into, into, but Ida. Like he swung that sword so hard that it got the hinges flung off. Yeah, that was very... Very impressive for, for some of the people there that are watching. And they're like, oh shit, don't fuck with him. Again, in their minds. So, yeah. Uh, I love making everyone terrified as hell from Deku. Eh, whatever. Backstory. Um, Isuku seeing now Ida's getting up, but has several cracks in his armor. Because that door was not, well, light. It was a thick-ass door. It was made of metal. You know those metal push doors? It was basically that. So, yeah. And, well, his helmet comes off. Or, Ida's, I should say, Ida's helmet comes off. Revealing the now promptly, oh, well, slightly bleeding Ida. Some blood came off his helmet. Or some of his helmet caved in and kind of scraped his insides, promptly leading to, well, getting a little, you know, gash on his forehead. Him saying, damn hero, I'll defeat you. But, well, he gets karate chopped in the neck. Before he can do anything. So, yeah. Now, they would have pronounced, touch the mom. Bakugo, well, not being captured, because I'll just say Zuku gave the his to Uraka. So, basically, basically, what he did was beat Bakugo's ass to commission. So, yeah. And, well, when he hears, well, hero team wins, he's pissed off at his mind, saying, Deku, how dare you win? 
launching himself out of the window using explosions, going to the fifth floor, or the top floor, saying, Deku, this will do the trick. On my own, the intercom stating that the match has been over. You lost, Bakugo. Him saying, I, I don't, I have not lost until Deku's defeated. I won't give up. Pretty needs to hear a click in both of his, well, thing, arms. Him just saying, ah, Time for you to die, Deku. Unleashing both of his cannon arms at, Baku, or at Deku and Uraka. Izuku knowing activates something that, well, everyone's shocked about. Blue Flames mode. Tier 1. Or, there's two tiers. Tier 1. Turning only his hair to blue. And partially blue and red flames. Blocking it. Basically, think of Baku's explosions and take a big ass sword. It's basically, he cut that explosion in two. And comes out of it panting like hell. Not panting, but like, you could see a sweat drop from him. And he put his sword downwards, like, you know, how Excalibur kind of was in the downward position at one point. And using it like a, well, something not to keep him from falling for a second. And, well, Baka would have internally shitting himself, thinking, that was the biggest explosion I did. And he cut that damn thing in half. Who the hell does Izuku think he is? And, well, before he can say that, Ame, well, drops in, crashing into the wall, or breaking a hole into the wall, and says to oh, Baku that the match is over. Stop. Looking at Izuku now, well, you can tell that there is some wear and tear on his, well, nothing on his clothing, but, or, no, his clothing is slightly torched, or, you know, asphalt on his, something it would get it, like, blackened. So, yeah. But, well, Izuku looks promptly tired and weak. Asking if Izuku's fine, Izuku's saying he's fine, just needs rest. Going over to the interroom and sitting on a bench. And passes out. Now, well, what does he pass out? He passes, on, passes out on Momo's lap. So he gets good sleep. No sexual comments, just stating something. So, yeah, also, I'm only stating stuff that I want to state. This is not meant to be an insult to any people that are female, male, white, black, I don't know, different themed of colors of... Well. So, yeah, not meant to be insults. And if anyone has a certain religion, please forgive me. So, yeah, because I really don't want to get berated in the comments for something and... YouTube would definitely strike my ass if I do say something I shouldn't say. But, yeah. And, well, yeah. Anyways, Izuku would, well, wake up to see that he's in the infirmary, kind of just sleeping on a bed. Still, basically, he has no shirt on. But he has pants, his pants on from before, with just no shoes on. You know, respectful Chinese people. And Willow looked over to his side, seeing Momo sleeping right, like sleeping on him, like in the bed with him. Willow just looked over at his other side, seeing Recovery Girl, looking at a screen attached to him. Izuku, well, flinging his finger off, and it goes to, eh. She immediately looks over to Izuku, awake, but she's like, oh, thank you, you almost gave me a heart attack, young man. Izuku bowing, saying, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, ma'am, if I worried you. Her saying, wow, what a respectful young man. Unlike looking at the now, well, Bakugo, other people. Izuku looking at Bakugo as well, just saying, yeah. He was very spoiled when he was growing up. So, yeah. Because of his quirk. She's like, Strong quirk, strongest in your school, pretty much. Kids these days, every always taking stuff for granted. At least you're different, in a good way at least. Izuku's smiling, saying, yes, at least. 
But behind that smile is a killed cow person that only cares about, well, his loved ones and his own goals. Him getting up to now see, well, somewhat awake Momo from the commotion. Him saying, sorry if I woke you up. Her saying, no, it's fine. It's fine, Izuku. How long was I sleeping? Izuku saying, no idea. Looking at, well, recovery saying, how long were we out? Hmm, about two hours? Izuku saying, oh, alright. Well, I have to get out. I have to go. Momo just saying, do you want to come over tonight? Him saying, well, I'm trying to get information on something. And give a present to Endeavor. Giving her one of those smiles only a, well, like a dumbass could give her. Her asking if he, what is he doing? Izuku saying, only sending a gift to Endeavor. I'm not going to hurt him, don't worry. I might hurt his pride, but I'm not going to hurt him physically. What are you saying? All right. And Recovery Girl being there is just saying, what are you going to do? I'm massively hurting his pride and might get him sent to jail. She's like, wait, what? Him saying, e do you not know what happened to Todoroki? Or Todoro Shoto Todoroki? She's like, no. He was abused and, well, was. And his, well, also, he was abused and his, well, dr and it drove him. Um, his mother into sanity. Ren Shoto. She's like, oh, oh, damn. Okay, you get his ass. So, yeah. Now, when Endeavor comes home that lovely day, he would have seen a present on his front door. And in it, there's a disc case, and it looked like nothing was on it. It's basically a black disc case. Opening it up to see a disc in it. Say, stating, play me, with a smile on it. Him just being curious, putting it on. With a, well, former of Izuku wearing a mask, but still Izuku, saying, Endeavor, Endeavor, or NG Todoroki, you're getting this message because you fucked up. Now, Yumiki and, um, the brother, I, the college brother, would have, like, wait a minute, is that? And then they hear, wee, 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 rushing by. They don't know, and they hear a knock, knock, knock. With him just saying, if you're hearing this message, it means that you fucked up. Endeavor, you're going to put, you're going to put a, your ass away for all what you did to Shoto Todoroki and Rin Todoroki. You abused and, well, led someone to insanity. So, you're charged with said charges and says, have a lovely life. Now, Fumiki's like shocked, saying, F -f -f Dad, did, did you do that? He's like, N no, I didn't. And then a screen pops up, revealing, well, several cameras of, well, harshly trained Todoroki. She's like, why did you do that to Todoroki or Shoto? Why did you do that? He was only a young kid. She had also, guys, she had no idea what Endeavor was doing to Todoroki. Which is actually another reason why she's so pissed off. Endeavor remarking saying he needs to defeat All Might. He's, well, the only son that can defeat him. Plus, you are all mis or you are all mistakes. Which does hurt them, but well, they push past it, the pain or the whole insult that Endeavor just gave them, saying that that, well, it doesn't matter. They still are here. And, well, yeah, now the door would have broken in, saying, Inji Todoroki, you're, well, under arrest. And saying, do you know who I am? Them saying, former, well, second rank pro hero Endeavor, we know who you are, but your chargers are still there. So we, you can either come in peacefully, or we, we can either do this two ways, Endeavor. Calmly or rationally. Or, we do this two ways, bloody or calmly, your choice. Endeavor sighing, saying, fine, but that footage will be deleted soon. 
And oh boy, Zuka has his own file. He made sure to keep a double copy of this. So, yeah. In court, well, the masked man would have come by. And looking through the screen. Now, there would have been said no footage, so Endeavor would have gone scot-free. What's someone falling down saying, I beg to differ. People, well, the officer would have immediately point their guns at Izuku or Deluke saying, but Deluke just, well, handing the, well, sword to, um, the judge saying, keep this, I merely want to speak. Also, please do, um, you know, the old, I swear to tell the truth and everything. The judge would have been curious and, well, says, okay, well, there's no harm. And Izuku promptly brings up a disc. Now, he asks if someone has a disc player. Now, Endeavor sees the disc and he's like, Don't you dare. Izuku's smiling back saying, What? What are you saying, don't I dare? Endeavor, are you that scared of what I can do to you in a matter of seconds? And the disc player comes by with a TV. You know, one of those like big stroller kind of things with a TV on it. And it showed several pictures and stuff like that. It's the same message that Endeavor told Roki, you fucked up. So one of the guys in the back just chuckled. And, well, he would ask if this is not fake. And Zuku's just saying, all this is completely real. I swear. And he is on the kind of stand, so he can't speak. And then they charge Endeavor. Which abuse and putting someone to madness and other such charges that would go along with this. Now, when Tochinori, aka All Might, hears about this, he's deeply like, Endeavor, what did you do? And who is that mask man? Or man? No, he would know. And, well, Izuku, what, why'd you do that? Next day, rumors go around saying, hey, well, the Dark Knight, also as known as Deluke, put Endeavor to jail. Also, if you're wondering, he got a sword back. So, yeah. Now, well, um, rumors go around to saying now that, well, Izuku is being proud of being him as the, you know, knight. Because it looks basically like Izuku. Now, which would give him a fandom of several people, which also brings the Together of, well, the higher-ups. Basically, the big three. Mirio, Neturi, and... What was his name? The guy that can eat stuff and he can become the animal parts. So, yeah. Which, Mirio is interested in saying, I'm gonna go see what he is like. Tamaki... Wait, is that Tamaki? Oh, no, I think I got it right, Tamaki. Um, Tamaki would have, well... Just said, are you sure? Don't we have class? And saying, it's fine. I'll tell, well, I'll tell our teacher that we just need to do something for, um, another, some, for another teacher. It's fine. Giving, well, one of his always lovable smiles. Ned, you're saying, all right, I'll come with you too, so you don't get in trouble. And they're like, when did we get it? When did we ever get in trouble? She tells about a time before. Mary's like, wait, that was only one time she does the old woman look of, you sure about that? You sure? Are you sure about that? So, yeah. And lunchtime happens. Izuku promptly eating with in class. Now, is also eating lunch there for a plot. And you hear a knock, knock, knock on the door. Aizawa just telling um, Izuku to get the door. Izuku sighing and just saying, one second, Momo. Putting her off to the side, because Momo was kind of sleeping on his shoulder, but he put her off to the side for a second. And gets up and sees Mirio saying, um, yes, um, yes, um, who are you? Him saying, hi, I'm Mirio Toga. Not Toga. I'm Mirio Himiko. No, what was his last name? Or I'm just saying, he's I'm Mirio and last name. This is Tamaki and Nedre Hagakure. It's like saying, bowing, saying, oh, you're the big three. Uh, what do I uh, owe the pleasure? Mirio saying, no, it, you don't have to bow, it's fine. 
It's like saying, I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't have my lovely manners. I have a lot of responsibilities. So I do need to show respect to my more... The higher ranking people that I go with. The, I'm not the eighth... I'm not the 18th ranked winery for no reason, you know. Which, Nedra just says, wait, you own the a winery and the 18th? Him saying, yes. What about it? N nothing, I just, I never expect a young, a, well, 20-year-old to have a winery that's so high in the rankings. It's shocking. Izuka saying, well, it was owned by my former boss, but he was dirty. So I took the business over and cleaned it up. It's now fully a fully legitimate business. And, well, might ask again, why are you here? Mira is saying, I want to fight you. Is it saying, Prepa are you sure about that? Yes, why? Is it saying, no, I'm just curious. You know what I'm capable of, right? Yes, I know who you are, Dark Knight. Which everyone in the room just peeks up saying, D Dark Knight, D Dark Knight. And Izuku saying, okay, Lemillion. While pulling, pulling his hand out of his pocket, going to shake their hand. Now, well, looks like a lot of power is coming off of them. And, well, they're dead eyeing each other in a very serious look. And they're gripping quite tightly. But they end up stopping, you know, because they don't want to scare everyone half to death. And, yeah, the, with Izuku's asking, where do you want this to happen? Him just saying, go to, um, ground beta. Izuku's saying, okay, let's go. Proceeding to just say that he needs to pick something up before. Mira saying if he needs a sword. Izuku's saying, yes, unless he wants to use hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mira just says, no, if you want to use a sword, I'm completely fine with it. Izuku goes off, quickly grabs the sword, comes back, and, well, what you might think, Mira gets his ass beaten. He tries, and, well, to beat Izuku, but Izuku's higher up stamina and overall physical body beats him. Because, well, Izuku being the smart person he is, he got to the whole, oh, he can permeate, but, well... Maybe he can't permeate everything. What I'm trying to say is he basically does a Minato, basically tricking them or forcing Mario to stop using his quirk. So, yeah. And whenever he stopped permeating to actually try to hit Izuku, he would have gotten a nice crack in his hand due to Izuku blocking that with the sword, which is metal. Which, if you hit your hand very hardly against metal. Ooh, that's that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. So, yeah. And he has a broken arm, but that would lead to him getting the dull still dull dulled sword smacked into his stomach, launching him like a fling toy, and engraving himself into the wall. And you and he comes out of it making seeing a gr engraving now. Tamaki and Netjure are very shocked that a first year can beat a third year. And Netjure goes over to Miru saying if he's okay. Tamaki looking over at Izuku saying, How strong are you? Izuku walking off, just stating that he wants a rematch. Come find him. He does enjoy um, fighting against, you, against him. But then looks at Tamaki saying, Oh. Sorry, I'm the, if you want to know who I am, I'm Izuku Midoriya, the Luke, or the Black Knight. Waving them off, flinging or his sword on his back, walking through the hallway, and, well, yeah. When he gets back, everyone's like asking him what happened, if he won, and stuff like that. And he's out wanting to know the results. Izuku's saying, I won, why are you all looking to me like I'm some sort of god? Or I just did something no one else could. And Aizawa is like, you fought or you won against Mirio. Izuku saying, yes. He was a very difficult opponent. Or 
it's a, he was a very tricky opponent to defeat. So what about him? With his, I was just saying, how the hell did you beat against his permutation? Even I have difficulty in that. Izuka saying, well, I flinked my sword at him, which would leave him to be needing to permeate. But once my sword left his body, I basically beaten and battered him until he went back to phasing. And that process went on until he couldn't phase anymore. And then I, after that, I used my sword to beat his ass. And they're all like, oh, I guess that makes sense. So, yeah. And, well, time passes, several weeks, or one week goes by. They primarily just do regular stuff, like, you know, school stuff. Do a little more hero training, but nothing too much. Now, well, they would have pronounced, Arza would have come, come in that day telling everyone to shut up, and they're going on a field trip. They would have all been like, oh, really? Whatever, where are we going? Him saying to the EDC, or the, not EDC, the, that's a, not, not, an EDC is everyday carry, no. On the USJ. And. Uh, well. Izuka saying really. We're going there. You realize. We're trained to be heroes. Right. When I was just saying. Enough Izuku. We're not going there. We're going to the EDC. Unforeseen. Um, situations. It's basically to teach you how to save people, in short. It's just saying, oh, okay. And, yeah. Now, well, afterwards, they pronounce go, get on the bus, and go off. Now, they would ask of what the hell was, well, with, I'll just say, um, um, dinky ass, Izuku, can I ask you something? Um, yeah, what is it, dinky? Izuku would state. So, a couple of weeks, or last week, you did that something with, like, blue flames. Like, was that your kind of thing with the technique or your trump card? Is it saying, yes, but that's only tier one. I have a higher version of that. It's called tier two. But it put more, it puts more strain on my own body. And it's grants me more power over my flames and control. But it's very damaging to my body. Which is why I refrain from using it when it's unnecessary. Which there are shocks saying, can you show us? Is it saying, maybe later. But, anyways. They would pronounce Go and Kirishima, well, with some remarks saying, hey, it's fake villains. Now, Zuku would look over, saying, those aren't fake villains. Then looking at us, I was saying, shall we? Him saying, you're a student, you can't, well, but, well, Izuku saying, sorry, and, well, gets his sword, and engraving it into one of the boys, or, using it to smack one of the villains, and basically using him as, like, a baseball, and the sword as a bat, and Shigaraki got hit that by that person. Which shut him up from doing his old speech. Shigura, or well, the old th what happened with um, Gorgiri, He kind of just took, or Shigaraki would have just took the um, the guy off of him, saying, "What the hell?" Izuku smirking and well, the f either in takes or qu very quickly taking the villains out. He would have been told that a well a vigilante named the uh, well. Dark Knight would have come to, was going to come here, as well as All Might. Now, Shigaraki was actually not tasked to kill Izuku, more like capture him. And, well, he said, Korgiri, bring out the Nomu. Him saying, are you sure, young master, if that's wise? Him saying, it is, now bring it out. Yes, young master. Bringing the gnome out, and Zuku sees it, shocked, and says, "Everyone, get back!" Everyone knowing the serious tone in well, Zuku's voice, 
And as I was saying, what is that? Izuku saying, the yellow V were experimenting on people, giving them quirks, or giving them powers, and making their bodies into some sort of mindless creature. For what I can see, that's it. And I'm not going to be able to hold. I'm not going to be able to hold back anymore. Proceeding to well, jab his sword into the ground and screams out. It's basically. Fire is coming off of him, and it's first red, and then it turns to blue. His body changing into, well, the second form. Blue eyes, blue hair. No, not, you know what's screw I'm not, it's not blue, not blue eyes anymore, it's gonna be black eyes and blue hair. And it's, well, Izuku proceeds to put his sword, like he's about to swing, and, well... He leaps, is what he does. And he brings his sword right up in over his head. About to swing down to the Nomu. And oh boy, does he do does that. Using his own fire to empower it. Launching himself. And even coming down faster, because of his fire. Never, everyone would have been shocked and... Well, probably... Thinking, will Izuku be okay using his second tier? And, oh, this is fun. Izuku cuts the Nomu in two. But misses the head, so he, the Nomu regenerates. Izuku thinking maybe the, well, one of my info brokers. Or maybe one of... One of those info brokers I asked. Asked, yes, he asked one of those info brokers to tell him something. It was true about the Nomo's weakness. And cuts the head off quite well. The sword was still dulled, so it took a little more power. It was a miracle it cut before. But now, it took a lot out of him. And he can feel his body saying, you need to stop this. But he pushes past that pain. Pointing to Shigaraki saying, you're next. <clears throat> but wincing in pain. But pushing past it. Now everyone can tell Izuku's very much so in pain. They're very concerned. But they're more or less too concerned about themselves. But, well, before Izuku can attack Shigaraki... A black portal comes from, well, when he's trying to land it, will land it right in front of Shigaraki to hit him. Well, before he can land, he gets in, will teleport into a portal. And getting landed into a, well, and landing roughly into a boat with Suyu and Mineta. With now Zuku not seeing any villains around, would have immediately turned his thing off, or the tier 2 and turning it off, and... Very panting, saying, damn it. Why, why do I have to feel damn weak now? So you immediately going to Izuku saying if he's okay. Izuku, well, saying, I'm, ah, fine. Get off me. Kind of trying to nudge her off, but to you insists of, Izuku needs to rest. Izuku saying he's fine and we need to get out of this. Still on pain, yes, but, well, he knows there's no time to be slacking. This is no time to be slacking off. Because he needs to make up for Mendez's slack, too. So, yeah. And, oh boy, does he do, because, well, he looks down to see villains. But he's limping and using his sword as a crotch. Or as kind of like a walking stick. And, well, he says that they should be safe here, but they're going to need a way out. Looking at Froppy... Asking if, well, what's her quirk? Her saying, I can basically do anything a frog can do. Izuku saying, so you can jump far? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, put Mineta and me into your tongue and and launch off. I can, if we don't get to the top, we can just swim there. Her asking if Izuku can, well, swim, even have enough energy to do so.
It's a good thing, I'll manage. And, yeah. They actually end up making it, not, well, crash landing into the water before they make it. And, well, Izuku is noticeably, noticeably feeling more and more pain every passing moment, because he needs aid, but there's no aid coming, or at least not yet. Which, well, he sees now the very pissed off Shigaraki saying, You killed it, you killed my Nomu. That was supposed to go all night. And Izuku just saying, Tough luck, kid. Getting into a very poor stance, but a stance nonetheless, showing that he can still fight. Stating, bring it on. And the villains take up his challenge. And Izuku being hurt, being weak, butchers all of them. He doesn't care about his physical body. He's passing, or he's pushing through all the pain. Even using tier 1 at one point. To take out one of the more difficult villains. And, well, when he gets to see, once he get closer to Shigaraki, he unleashes it again, tier 2. Screaming out of Shigaraki, saying, Time to end this! But, well, he was bluffing, in a way. Because Shigaraki wasn't his target. Because he knew Korgiri would just protect him. But, well, he didn't, Shigaraki might, or Korgiri might not think to protect himself. Izuku doing so, and, well, hitting, well, well at least trying to hit. Um, Korgiri, it passes, or it hits, but it rips a nice gas room cutting right through the clothing. If you don't know, he's basically missed. Um, Gorgiri. Or, he can, it's basically, Gorgiri is basically a mist in a way. And he can expand himself, but if he gets chopped and slightly, he's definitely gonna get past, that's gonna be phased through. But this would have done nothing, but, well. Izuku... Well, just putting more power into his fire now, because, well, he couldn't cut it, but he can make them get knocked off. Basically, makes kaboom, and it could fling them around. Him now hitting the ground, launching a big-ass blue barreling fire, add them both. Now, this would have been now difficult for, well, Corrigiri to contain, but, well, he barely does so. But before he can do it, he almost gets his head chopped off. But before De or at least if he didn't at least move before, because Deku was kind of like about to chop the guy's neck off or Korgiri's neck off. But well, the pain is now even worse than before. And well, Izuku's very like he's trying to stay awake, but he can't. The only thing that's really keeping him awake at the moment is adrenaline. But as soon as he's that adrenaline stops, oh, he's KO. And that's not in doing so his injuries from even before. So, yeah. And Izuku, oh. Well, what might you think? All Might comes in saying, oh, I am here. Seeing Izuku trying to fight back against, well, Shigaraki and Court Giri. And, well... He raised that would be too occupied with other villains. He might not be hurt, but he's still, there's a lot of villains there. So, yeah. Telling Izuku to stop, he's gonna hurt himself even more. And says he'll take it from here. Izuku saying, Damn it, I'm too weak. No, I need to push through. And screams out and just says, I'm not done yet. Trying to push past his lemons, but making himself pass out due to all the exhaustion and, you know, the pain. Passing out, and Momo screaming and saying, Izuku! And goes to Izuku saying, Is, is, is he okay? Are, are you okay? Izuku, Izuku! But, well, she feels for a pulse. There's a pulse, but it's weakening every second. She says, someone, can someone help? 
and the heroes come by with a recover girl immediately looking at Zuku, ratted and, well, weak body, saying, what the hell did he do? But, but sat back for minds, well, kissing Izuku, or, you know, not, no, not trying to be, you know, yeah, sexist, but, or, make moments jealous, but she uses her quirk, she needs to kiss, or, you know, grandma kisses Izuku to heal her. He now, well, more, five days later, Izuku wakes up in a hospital, hospital bed, extremely tired, and looks over, to see a, well, mama, that looks like she's been crying for quite a while. Cut back to, well, when Izuku was passed out. Mama would pronounce every single day, come by to Izuku, or actually, would actually be the entire week with Izuku, not going to school, and her parents did tell her to go to school, but she always said no, and Whenever they tried calling, she just said, she basically put them on voicemail. So, yeah. Mmm. Yeah. And Izuku would pronounce, now look at himself and see there's lots of blankets on him and puts one on, on her. Yes, he's weak, but he can at least put something on his girlfriend. He's not a jackass, because she, because it looked like she was shivering. And he did look out, seeing it was night. But, well, am scuffling around with a woken up Momo and her asking if, Izuku, are you awake? Izuku is smiling, saying, hi, Momo. Sorry if I, but I can't finish that sentence because Momo hugs him tightly and he's like, he can't breathe like, Momo, I, I, I can't breathe. <laughs> sorry for the bad sound effects. Momo's saying, oh, sorry, it's just. I was worried, and Izuku saying, Momo, don't worry, I'm fine. Looking at himself, saying, just scratches and bruises. Not everything like the usual. He's saying, Izuku, don't say that. You use your power, you used it too much. You could have died. It was a miracle that the heroes came in time. If it wasn't for that, you would have, well, looking away from Izuku and out the window, saying, Izuku knowing that what would happen, and, well, just, well, puts his hands on Momo's cheek, saying, Momo, I promise, I will not die, no matter what, I will always be there for you. Whether you like it or not, I'll always be here for you. Momo getting to tears and saying, D -d don't make promises you can't keep, please, just Come back alive when you're you're done. Your hero work. Or whatever whatever stuff you need to do. If it's a vigilante or something else. And yeah. It's Zuku saying, I promise. Hugging her and they passionately kiss with the door being slammed open. By pissed off as I was saying, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku looking over saying, Yes, Sensei? Or yeah, yes, Sensei? Are you okay? I think so. You need to get um recovery girl to come in and make sure I'm okay, but I'm awake, so that's a plus. And I can feel all my limbs. Also plus. Just very tired. Good. Proceeds to, well, give the treatment to Izuku and uh, tells him, Never do that again. And, yeah. Izuku, well, saying that he will do it if, it ne if it's needed. And, um, or Izuku just, or, no, Izuku, Aizawa just says, no, you never use that power again. It's too straining on your body. Izuku saying, I'll use it if I have to, is it Eraser Ed, or is Aizawa. If someone's in danger, I'll use it. I don't care. Plus, I promised Momo I'd always come back. A lot, so. I can, well, break a promise to my own girlfriend. Which does make I saw a sigh, but says fine. Fine. Whatever. Just don't die. 
walking off. Now, they would have looked at each other, or Momo and, well, Izuku would have looked at each other, and be confused. Is Aizawa has never shown this emotion of being concerned. Terrified, yes, or terrifying, yes. Other qualities, oh, most definitely. But never con this concerning. Like, he was never this concerned. So, yeah. Now, I do believe that's a good spot to leave this part off for today. Um, yeah. Um, I got school tomorrow, so I have to get some stuff ready. But, other than that, I do hope you all have a lovely day, a lovely life, and wear a mask. Also, subscribe and leave a like, or dislike if you don't like my videos. You have 